In the early prospecting period of working with the progenitor virus, it became clear to Umbrella that this virus could be used for much more than just dropping on a population and sending in a cleanup crew afterwards. The infected were great for eliminating a population, but what if you needed a specific task done? The company began working on bio-organic weapons to solve this issue. While meeting failure after failure, they eventually got their first taste of success through trial and error. This success would become known as the Tyrant. Who is the Tyrant, and why should we care about this fedora-wearing Magood boy? Well, you've come to the right place if you've ever wondered this. So with that set up, let's discuss the lore and morphology of Mr. X and learn about where this absolute unit comes from. Before getting to Mr. X, let's first take a step back and learn about the origins of this creature. The original Tyrant was just a normal human who received surgical alterations post-infection. These alterations created a creature who was larger and stronger than your average human, but still is smart, or perhaps a little less smart than your average human. The reason for this being was that the infection almost always causes brain damage to the host as they become begin to change. These mutations caused by the infection formed a powerful claw on the left hand made out of bony deposits. The muscle on the tyrant was well beyond human limits, allowing it to tear through people like tissue paper. It was capable of running up to 43 miles per hour, which means it could also run down anyone trying to get away. An interesting thing about the original tyrant is it did not suffer from decay like the other creatures did. Instead, its form was relatively normal, generally speaking. The creature did experience a growth spurt during the two and a half months, however, making it larger than your normal human if it wasn't already. Physically, the creature, as mentioned previously, was altered in one main way to fuel the new muscle that it did have. A heart transplant was performed on the tyrant and a large mammal was essentially harvested from an unknown source. This created a duplicate circulatory system in the body, giving it much needed blood to all the muscles. This also meant that the creature does not tire out like a normal human does and instead can just kind of keep going. The tyrant was not perfect, however. The main issue that it had as time passed was that this creature began to get a sense of self. Its brain was just about as intelligent as a normal human, so eventually it began to question why it was taking orders from those weaker than itself, which considering how ridiculously strong this thing was, could cause issue for the humans issuing the orders. However, in spite of this, the project was deemed a semi-success, and it continued on as they attempted to find ways to create a creature who would accept orders and would not begin to question them down the line if outside influence of the handlers was not given for long enough. The project continued in the laboratory below Raccoon City to overcome this flaw that the tyrants had, and eventually it was completed. The T-103 came into existence after being cloned from the original tyrant. The reasoning behind the T-103 was that they wanted it to stand alone, rather than being called the T-003. Just some uh, side information for you there. So the T-103 was an excellent killing machine. It had a basic human form, albeit much larger than your average human. However, it still would not draw too much attention if you didn't know what you were looking for. Affording a trench coat and a stylish fedora. <laughs> oh man, I almost made it through that sentence without laughing. Anyways, kids, don't wear fedoras for the love of God. This tyrant would be sent out on missions to eliminate personnel and retrieve certain high priority targets. And this finally brings us to the actual game. Resident Evil 2 Remake was first awesome, and second, it had six T-103s dropped into the city with different missions. The one you get nice and cozy with was known as the T-00. This particular tyrant, while behaving and acting like the others, appears to act very human in certain ways, like if you shoot its hat off, it becomes irritated. While the others would no doubt behave in this manner as well, familiarity brings respect. So what is this particular tyrant doing amongst the police station? While the other five were dropped into combat Delta Force that had made its way into the sewers, this particular one was tasked with eliminating the remaining police officers and collecting the G-Virus from Sherry. So first things first, let's discuss the strength. Tyrant is ridiculously strong, able to lift a helicopter above its head. This would be quite impossible for multiple people. Helicopters of this size would typically be about 14,000 pounds, which comes out to about 6,350 kilograms for those using non-freedom units. So just with its shoulder, it was able to lift half this helicopter at minimum, which would probably say to me it was about 7,000 pounds just on its shoulders or 3,175 kilograms. That is crazy amounts of strength, but it's not just muscle. The bone would need to be incredibly powerful too. The bones had to grow considering this creature experienced a growth spurt as well. Longer bones as we all know, typically lead to weaker extremities, so they would need to be thicker, allowing for muscle to attach without snapping them. Somebody in my comments recently said that thicker bones do not equate strength. That is absolute nonsense. I implore you to pick up any anatomy book. Uh, I just thought I would throw that out there. Hollow bones are weaker, but they can be relatively strong, whereas thicker bones are thicker for a reason, which means they're used for strength capabilities. So enough with that soapbox. If this much muscle was on a normal human, every 
every joint you had would be dust in minutes. This bone strength allows for several things, but most notably in my mind, the ability to punch through walls, which shows us again how strong this creature is. Make your way into the holding cells, you'll find an unfortunate reporter. Apparently he either is talking too loud or is a target considering the information he has on Umbrella. Anyhow, the tyrant is able to bust its hand through a solid wall and crush the skull of the reporter. Ouchies! Obviously for any standard human, this would snap bones in the hands if they were able to, but this creature does it with very little issues and without any problems coming from it. So what changes had to be made for this creature to get to where it is? Well, as we all know, the T-103 was simply a clone of the T-002. However, the key changes that had to be made were that the strength was kept as well as the bone strength and the growth spurt, but a specific gene was sought after. This gene would allow the tyrant to retain its intellect without it gaining a sense of self. The mammalian heart transplant was also brought over, but more was needed, so let's discuss that in detail and the possible physical changes to the human form. Muscle is first. It's fairly clear that the amount of muscle located on the tyrant is well above anything most humans could carry, let alone operate. There are actual genetic mutations in humans right now that could alter this, specifically super male syndrome. Super male syndrome in humans is the addition of an extra Y chromosome. So instead of your typical male having XY, this male would have XYY. This might not yield a stronger human per se, but the muscle is quite pronounced in some cases. The effects of this muscle is that it can be doubled up on the body. I'm not suggesting that Mr. X has super male syndrome, but the effects could be done by simply altering the genetics of a human. In this case, the effects of super male syndrome could be brought on by the virus considering it attacks humans on a cellular basis. The interesting thing about super male syndrome is that it also usually produces taller males. It causes the bones to grow more than usual, producing taller people after a point of what's considered a normal range. This is interesting as it also exists in the tyrants. The surgical implants conducted on the tyrants would make sure to fuel this new muscle and new growth quite effectively. So how tall is he? Well, let's take your average door, which is about 6 feet 8 inches or so, and considering he has to duck to walk into the room, I would put him at about 7 feet to about 7 feet 3 inches. So good lord, this thing is about as tall as Master Chief is in his armor. This comes out to about 2.3 to 2.2 meters tall. Another interesting idea about the possible effects of the virus mimicking super male syndrome is the testosterone production. In super males, they tend to have higher testosterone, and as known, this can increase aggression in any type of male animal. The tyrant exhibits extreme annoyance should you injure it or hinder it in any way. While this may just have been an effect of the brain damage, hormonally, it seems that this creature would have extremely high test levels as well as human growth hormone levels, allowing it to get this particular build. Super male syndrome on a tyrant is a pretty cool prospect, and it's a real-world explanation of the changes induced by the virus. Again, though, I doubt the virus has the ability to add in the extra Y chromosome in the tyrant, but with that said, the changes do seem to mimic symptoms brought on by it. So moving past that, it would also appear that the tyrant has a regenerative ability as well, which is also well beyond anything humans have. Many times the creature is injured, shot, ripped apart, falls into molten metal, yet is able to get back up and keep attacking later on. Going back to my earlier point about super male syndrome, considering the body has been kicked into overdrive, human growth hormone would be in greater quantities all throughout the body, and as such, this could induce healing on a level not known in humans. The face of the tyrant is one that is rather blank. From what we can see, the skin is more than likely scaly and thin, and has turned gray through the process of mutation as well. The eyes almost appear to have been altered and are steel blue concerning the iris. It is possible that they have been altered some way through surgery, but I'm not 100% sure if these were changed out or if it is just actually caused by the mutation. His basic form is extremely lethal in combat as he relentlessly finds, follows, and punches to death any of the targets he sots after. But there exists another form that is even more lethal should you just completely annoy him enough. This form comes out when tracking down Leon for long enough and taking enough damage. Upon entering its second form, the changes are quite apparent. No longer does it have the overall human shape, but instead, its entire right arm has mutated. Where the right hand was is now just a large claw, and this claw appears to be made out of sharpened bone, which interestingly enough, appears to look more like its original clone form. The stress response appears to cause these creatures to change and mutate. This form is quicker and more lethal, taking just a few hits to completely bring you down. It appears that the heart is exposed, as perhaps now it is handling more work after the mutation. This has led to larger veins and arteries in the area exposing a weak spot. So presumably at this point, it can be assumed that while the first form, the human heart is working probably more so than the larger mammalian heart, and it's handling most of the blood pumping, but when it enters its second form, this causes more stress, which more than likely causes the larger heart to take over completely to handle the blood requirements for the body.
body. The face of a super tyrant is completely mangled by an explosion. With half the jaw missing and just the top teeth still in place, this creature has seen better days. The eye socket on the right side has almost been completely blown open, leaving the eye in place, presumably held there by the optic nerve. The right half of the body has been damaged quite heavily and the ribs are actually showing through to the surface. So, how do you game in one another? Well, in its first form, Mr. X is gonna give it to you. Take a wrong step through a wrong door and you'll get a knuckle sandwich that will take you out completely. A super tyrant does have a special game in, we'll call it. It will run at Leon, stabbing him in three places, the upper chest, the upper abdomen, and the lower abdomen. Considering that there are important organs and arteries in this area, this leads to an extremely quick bleed out for Leon. How does Leon end Mr. X? Well, the good old fashioned way, a rocket launcher to the face. It's quite impossible to cause enough damage in the first form to Mr. X, but upon entering his second form, ironically, a weakness is shown. Aiming for the face and chest region, you are able to take out his heart, which completely blows him in half, ensuring that he will not be regenerating from that hit. And I did just want to point out one thing. According to the lore, Umbrella looks for certain genetics in a person who can maintain the intellect that they have while they are infected, but also I do think that it's interesting the size of this creature and it's able to maintain its intellect of a human or a little bit below that. Again, I'm not saying that this is super male syndrome, but it is interesting that they are looking for certain genetics, whereas others won't work, and a lot of the symptoms exhibited in super male syndrome do appear to be exhibited in Mr. X. But there you have it. Mr. X is a beastly, grayish, stoic creature, and while not explicitly shown, he has changes from a normal human form, which I would lean more towards those being the effects of super male syndrome without the addition of the Y chromosome. This would explain his size increase and how he has changed from his original, well, or I guess what he was cloned from changes from the T002's original form. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. I hope everyone enjoyed. If you did, leaving a like helps and let me know what you think about my idea down in the comments. I will drop my Twitter, Patreon, Discord, and merchandise links down in the description if anyone is interested in that. And of course, I would like to thank my patrons. First up, our astronauts are Joseph Gibbons. Thank you, man. Next up, it's not a spoon. Thank you as well, sir. And we have Laffy No Skill. I appreciate the support you show on this channel, bro. Next up, our three scientists are A. Laurentis. Then we got Artin Chornage. And next up, a new guy, the Lone Titan. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate your assistance as well. We have two residents now, Punish Meat and Red Loud. Thanks, bro, chachos. Our geneticists are Allison Caspero, Andrew Lawson, and Divine Whisper. Holding their Masters of Biology, we have Adam Hartswick, Cameron Smith, Cough Syrup, Edgy McGee, Gage Morrill, Mr. Poifish, Pendleton 115, Stutz, The Rent of Lies, and The Otter Man. And last but not least, with their Bachelors in Morphological Sciences, we have Add to the List, Hockey Gal Comics, Alex the Gun Guy, Anthony Charles West, Anthony Wolf, Captain Gas Mask, Dark Gear, Dragon of Death, Dustin Ellis, Eric Scott Gillies, Fruit Eater, Gabriel Hernandez, Icarus, Jake Russell, Cobb McHenry, Marcus Vall, Molten Tarts, Professor Benips, Russell McBride, Sir Deadlock, The Original Fat, and Trixie Lula Moon. So, thank you guys. That's gonna about wrap up this one. I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see y'all in the next one.